Unless you spent a lot of time in high school playing clarinet, you probably don't think too much about scales in music. Like, are there only 12 notes in an octave, the way you see them laid out on a keyboard? No, obviously not. There are so many other notes. If you grew up in a country like Canada or the UK, you're used to the traditional Western scale. There's a lot you can do with that scale, but it's always basically seven notes. It sounds good and normal and covers everything from this. To this. I'm on the outside. I'm looking in. All the greatest songs ever written. But if you grew up in southern India, Carnatic music might be more your style. The Carnatic system uses what's called shruti, considered to be the smallest interval that the human ear can detect. Some people say that that means 66 notes in a scale, but today it's generally agreed to be 22, which is still an awful lot of notes. Indonesian gamelan music is kind of the opposite. It uses different tuning than Western instruments, but typically fewer notes. Some instruments in an ensemble can only play a five note scale. The closest you'll usually get in Western music is 12 tone serialism, which ignores the rules of keys and scales and which 12 notes in an octave typically sound good together and instead has you use all 12 notes in an octave equally. Twelve-tone technique is used almost exclusively in the classical world, except for the one Black Flag instrumental EP. Not very good. But those 12 notes are still the ones that you see arranged on a standard keyboard. They're your grandparents' 12 notes. So where are the other ones? In Western music, the space between available notes is known as a semitone. Microtonal music describes any piece of music that uses the notes between those notes, between the keys that you can see in an octave on a piano. It includes the traditional Indian and Indonesian music that we were rapping about earlier, and this. And the entire keyboard of six octaves with a couple overlapping keys is 1,266 buttons. For me, the most exciting thing about microtonal music is the lengths that people have to go to in order to play it. With the exception of the traditional instruments that we were talking about earlier, you kind of have to be super serious about modding all of your shit. That's the fluid piano invented by Jeff Smith. Rather than being tied to 88 notes like most standard pianos, you can just retune it on the fly. Add enough frets, and you can experiment on your own with a homemade microtonal guitar. Gnarly. That particular Hesher is named Ron Sword, and he literally makes and shreds 16-tone microtonal guitars for a living. <laughs> Last Sacrament are microtonal death metal. As far as I can tell, they are the only members of that tribe, but they do have a funky cousin in Mono Neon. No big surprise, that is a custom-built bass. So for the everyday consumer, the easiest way to enter the microtonal world is probably with a tonal plexus.
Depending on the size, you can spend anywhere from $600 to $3,000 on one of these. Or you could just jam a bunch of frets into your acoustic guitar and call it a day. <laughs> There's also Harry Parch, the exceptionally cool and innovative composer responsible for some of the earliest non-traditional DIY microtonal instruments. Most of his instruments use his own 43-tone scale and are awesome looking. I've always thought it was strange how music that we tend to describe as innovative often still hews to a fairly rigid formula, whether it's bass, drums, and guitar, or the Western scale. And while it may not be the music that I want to listen to when I'm cleaning the kitchen or writing a script, it's cool to know that there are notes that we just don't hear hidden somewhere between the Baja Men and Fred Durst, and that there are some other braver souls that are still out there exploring those spaces. It's like finding out that there are new colors. Wait. What do you think? Is microtonal music something you'd want to jam on a long road trip? Can you imagine being acclimatized to a different sort of scale so that Miley Cyrus sounds like Last Sacrament to you? Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Be excellent to each other. Last week's episode was all about TV hijacking and specifically the very, very creepy Max Headroom incident. This is our comment of the week. The Nerdy Glasses Girl posted on the brand new, very cool, This Exists subreddit. Whoa, this exists, not who are thy sexists, or whatever it looks like without the capitals. Whoa, this exists. And it uh, references the AMA that was done a few years ago by someone claiming to know the person or persons responsible for the Max Hedrum incident. And Motherboard has kind of debunked this, but it's still a fascinating look into a possible scenario in which someone was able to broadcast a super scary spanked Max Hedrum onto two Chicago area channels in the 80s. If you wanna dig further into that insanely messed up and cool little mystery, I highly recommend checking out that link, which we've included in the description. And thank you very much for posting on the subreddit. There's already over 300 people on there, which is cool. Soon we're gonna start up the shit heel reading club on there, uh, and it's gonna keep growing. So check that out. Have a nice time. <laughs>